One type of evidence in abundance is footprints. Casts of alleged Sasquatch footprints have been made from impressions all over the world. These prints provide experts with a well-known clue, dermal ridges, better known as fingerprints. One of the best fingerprint experts in America is crime scene investigator Jimmy Chilcutt. He will examine casts of footprints for dermal ridge evidence to determine whether they were faked or whether they were caused by a known or unknown species. My testimony puts people in jail. So I have to be very, very careful and very professional when I match a latent fingerprint to an ink print. Chilcutt has fingerprinted every known great ape species. He'll use his unique skill and his catalog of primate material to examine and compare the best Sasquatch footprint casts available. As a latent fingerprint examiner, I'm one of the few who is an expert in primate fingerprints, trying to determine gender and race through fingerprints, because primates don't interbreed like humans do, and try to find the key that would unlock the secrets of human prints. I will apply the same science to the Sasquatch castings as I do to a latent fingerprint lifted from a crime scene. My study group consisted of over a hundred alleged Sasquatch castings. And some of these castings were cast as, as much as 20 years apart. And once I established the texture and the pattern flow of this animal, I was able to look at the other castings and know what I was looking at. At the very least, Chilcutt should be able to tell us whether the prints are from a real animal or a clever forgery. If this animal is walking through the wilderness, he's bound to come across rocks and rough terrain, which will cut the bottom of his foot. As the wound heals, the ridges curl inward toward the scar. So to authenticate any scar on these castings, I will be looking for that same characteristic. In human footprints, the ridges run horizontally across the width of the foot. On primates, the ridges run diagonally. On this casting, the ridges run vertically down the side of the foot. The ridges on this cast are about twice the thickness of a human print. Now these casts were cast 20 years apart and hundreds of miles apart, yet they have the same ridge texture and ridge flow pattern. Vertical and horizontal patterns and track stride also offer clues to potential misidentifications. It seems to me that the footprints constitute the largest and most consistent body of data bearing on this question. And as such, they really deserve a concerted systematic evaluation. Uh, in instances where we have successive footprints in a given trackway, uh, I've been able to note flexion and extension of the toes, variation in toe position, and interaction of the foot with substrate under varying conditions. I'll also be looking for dynamic signatures that show this is a, a living footprint as opposed to something static. In this instance, we have the good fortune of a pair of tracks that are successive in a single trackway. And by comparing then the shapes and conformation of the toes, we can say a lot. For example, here, the, not only are the toe pads uh, differing in dimensions, although clearly the same foot, even the toe spread is distinct from one footprint to the other. You're looking very closely at the surface of the footprint to see if there are any latent features, skin detail or skin ridge patterns that show up in the track. We'll be looking for landmark features that indicate the points of jointedness, where the foot bones articulate with one another and how they interact to form a, a functional unit. The, uh, the overall appearance of the footprint can also be used to compare tracings from one location to another to see if there are repeat appearances of an identifiable individual. And this overall picture will help us to uh, assess the function and compare that to models of uh, human foot function as well as non-human primates and even fossil hominid tracks uh, of early bipedal human ancestors. But what if an animal that left a set of alleged Sasquatch footprints was also filmed? Can the two pieces of evidence be linked together to mutually strengthen the case for authenticity? This exact scenario happened in 1967.
Steindorf's 3D modeling of the figure in the Patterson footage is now complete. The animation will be sent to Dr. Meldrum in Idaho, enabling a first-time glimpse of the Patterson creature from almost any point of view. With this animation now, I'll be able to not only visualize, but more importantly, quantify aspects of the, this peculiar bent-kneed uh, gait on a flexible flat foot. I've also noticed right away that there's an interesting rotation of the leg and foot that's not typical of a modern human gait. If this is in fact a real animal, this unusual combination of characteristics is going to give some important insights into the evolutionary history of bipedalism. In fact, it very well may challenge some of the uh, preconceptions that we have. These features correlate, in fact, with the very types of, uh, of adaptations that we would expect of a biped that's, that's living in rugged, mountainous uh, forests. For additional opinions on these anatomical perspectives, Dr. Meldrum consults with Andrew Nelson of the Center for Motion Analysis and Biomechanics at Idaho State University. Nelson is able to view the Patterson figure from yet another specialized perspective. While studying the Patterson footage, a large visible bulge is seen on the leg of the subject. Right there, stop there, and you can actually go one frame forward. While inconclusive, it does in fact raise additional questions about how a fake monkey suit could be constructed with such detail over 35 years ago. Uh, it could be some sort of a traumatic pathology, a rupture of the IT or iliotibial band, that allowing the underlying muscle to selectively bulge through in that area. You know, first of all, I would say that that would be characteristic of at least a partial rupture of uh, a part of the quadriceps. Hmm. There's also the IT band or the iliotibial band that mm -hmm. runs through the area also. Um, you know, a, a creature that would have that type of a rupture would certainly have compromised gait of some sort. Working together from fresh scientific perspectives, Meldrum, Nelson, and other scientists will be able to form new scientifically supportable conclusions about this footage. Our fingerprint expert, police officer Jimmy Chilcott, examined many footprint casts in an effort to find dermal ridge patterns that point to other known primates. A hoax or a new species? I've come to the following solid conclusion. Number one, that there is a great ape living in North America. Number two, that the friction ridges of this great ape are not human nor known primate. This conclusion may come as a shock to some people, but I stake my reputation on it. Given the tasks of evaluating anatomical evidence, footprints, the Patterson-Gimlin footage, and its 3D motion track reconstruction. After analyzing the biomechanical issues of the Patterson footage, I find it very hard to believe that somebody in 1967 could have fabricated the intricacies as evidenced by the soft tissue irregularity that's seen on the upper leg. The study of biomechanics at that time was just far too primitive. I've weighed and considered the evidence for a North American ape based on the Skookum body imprint, based on the Patterson film, based on hundreds of examined footprints. And I've now reached a point where it seems more incredible to consider all of this a series of spurious hoaxes spanning decades if not centuries than it is to entertain the likelihood that a new species of higher order ape may exist and may soon join the ranks of the family of primates.